It's me, Toby, and on behalf of the Buff Headwear Company, I want to welcome you to my recap of Survivor, Blood vs. Water, episodes 10, 9, and 8. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I've done a video blog, and in those weeks, as I mentioned in my uh, recap on the Buff website, I've been a little underwhelmed by this show, especially considering how exciting it was in the beginning. But a lot has happened, even though it hasn't been, to me, the most exciting thing that's gone on. So before, on the recap, we retire these buffs, and they join the illustrious ranks of such tribes as Bikal, Manono, and Gota. Uh, well, let's take a look at what has changed, and who has changed. And as a matter of fact, let's go through some changes ourselves. Now you just switch them. Uh, that might be a little formal for this occasion. Now that's more like it. Yes, Survivor Buffs, it's true. The first major change that's happened in the past few weeks is the merge. We are merged now. We are no longer Galang and Tadhana. Nope. Instead, we are now the new, beautifully named P. Per. They never told us the name of the tribe. They showed people about to name the tribe. They showed people making a banner with the name of the tribe on it. But they never told us the tribe name. Hmm, curious. Well, I looked it up. And the new tribe name is Kasama. Kasama is a Filipino word meaning companion. What the hell, Mr. Gerald? Are you, are we some sort of C and I dog companion? Let me just name the group. Fido, or Spot, or Toby, or... That's not funny. Not funny. It's a good name, though. Not funny. Not funny. Anyway, with this merge uh, came a shift in power. And what we thought maybe that the couples might get together that, that were still left in the game, Laura, who redeemed herself and came back in the game with her daughter Sierra, uh, Tina and Katie, and Aris and Vetus. But it turns out Aris was blindsided right after the merge, and the single people all formed the Power Alliance, and for the next couple of weeks, it has been kind of boring, um, they have been picking people off one by one until we got to this past week. Now, with Laura being voted off again, sorry, um, we are now all single people. Seven single people. Three of whom are returning players, Monica, Tyson, Jervis, and four of whom are loved ones. Katie, Sierra, Hayden, and Katie. So, you can see what happens, because with this, you know, things are changing, it's the time of the exchange, and now it's time for the alliance to go and feed off each other. So things are about to change. Okay. Some other things that are remain the same are some of the players are still playing familiar roles. Hayden and Caleb, for example, have been laying low. Now, I think they're about to make a move. Caleb seems like he's getting a little antsy, and Hayden's kind of exhibiting the same gameplay. I kind of remember him from Big Brother. Like, he didn't really himself, I think, make any big moves, but he was always in the team that was making the moves, and he's a good guy, and you carry along. And, you know, at least in Survivor, he has a shirt off a lot. And you know who's first one off at that challenge? Oh, Lord, child, 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 he held on that rope. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I hope he goes really far. I do, I do. In addition, we have Jervis. He's uh, Tyson's little lackey. And um, Tyson himself, who is in charge. But I guess it has changed a little bit because now it's publicly known that he's in charge. And he's not even hiding it uh, because they can't because everyone left. It's in his alliance. So that could prove interesting. Basically, some people are in their same kind of roles. Now, let's look at the three people who have sort of changed roles a little bit. And the three people all happen to be women. Tina's daughter. Uh, sort of woke up and joined the game a little bit uh, in the past weeks. She actually won individual immunity, um, which was stand still as possible. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, kind of a bringer. And so uh, she won that, and then also once her mom was voted out, she, you know, obviously had to be more vocal and try to make something happen, go look for the idol. Um, but, you know, it was kind of lame, didn't find the idol, and also gave up to Sierra so quickly that she didn't have the idol, so she was still kind of lame. Tina Weston is still the more interesting one of the two in that couple. But Katie lived through this past uh, tribal council, so we'll see what happens. If she can get with the newbies and get something going next week. Monica Culpepper, still my favorite person, but has really come with it. With the challenges, especially, and um, when she won her second 
out of the four, individual immunity is pastime with giving away food to the rest of the tribe. It's a little self-serving as most things she does seem to be, but I think that she, you know, it did have at least some basis in, you know, having a good heart. The gameplay she's exhibiting is what I thought she was going to do during one world, but she got voted out really quickly. And she seems like a strong woman from a player, but now that I see her with her husband, I just, it's just weird. I have this weird, like, that, she has a bad taste in my mouth. I don't, like, that's not gross, but, you know, I don't... I don't know, but she is a threat to win it if she makes it to the final three. And hopefully someone will come and change her batteries in some way midway through so that she can finish the game. Um, and then finally we have Sierra. Now Sierra has all of a sudden, all of a sudden, popped up and scheming. Wheeling and dealing. Tyson even noticed Sierra, he said, Sierra, smarter than we thought. Uh, smarter than you thought. I've been calling Sierra. For a long time. I was supposed to keep on Sierra. Oh no no no! Sierra's here to play. She's here to play. You know what? And so Sierra has come with it. Sierra, first of all, you know, has stayed kind of under the radar, but she made it to the merge. And then she gets back. It's just her and her mom for the last couple standing, and she's schooling her mom, telling her what to do. I loved her line. Okay, it gets sketchy. You make it sketchy. Because meanwhile, she may make it sketchy, but Sierra makes it shady, honey. Shady. Um, so, she is guiding her mom through the game, and her mom is so, you know, emotional and just, you know, amazed that Sierra's leading her social game, but I mean, not for nothing, I'm pretty sure that even in life, Sierra's social game is a little better than her mom's. Just guessing. Um, so, it's an interesting, though, change that seems to be in their dynamic. A lot of times devoted to the fact that Sierra's now the teacher, the Padawan has become the master. And, um, but Sierra is also not afraid to do what she needs to do to get further in the game. Her lie to Katie that she had the idol that resulted in Katie announcing uh, that would you have it and giving it away was hilarious. Um, her, her interview, she's like, I would have waited a little bit longer. I love that. And then her voting her mom out. She didn't need to vote her mom out. I'm not sure why she did it. Maybe she was solidarity with everyone else. She did not need, there, was, there were enough votes to have her mom out. Even without her doing it, Tyson seemed to have a plan, so she wouldn't have to do it. But she did it anyway. Put mom on the paper. And I think with that, just proved that she's one to be working with. What's gonna happen next week? It looks like finally people are gonna turn on Tyson. I feel like the good thing about Sierra is that she didn't emerge as this player, didn't show herself to be such a player to everyone till later. So Tyson already has a bigger target on his back, and they have, as they go with like new versus old people, they have greater numbers. I really hope that that happens. I'd love to see the newbies all go to uh, Final Tribal and see what happens. So who knows what's gonna happen between now and next episode or the finale. You know, things change as we see so quickly here. Um, and not just with the game, and not just with the players, but even with, like, the production. And I think some of these things need to change back. Change. So now let's talk about something that has not changed. Y'all, Redemption Island is still there. Still sending people to it. I thought we were done with Redemption Island, and ours got voted out, and Jeff Probst was like, do I have a chance to get back in the game? And I was like, what? What? He deceived me. At a reunion special or something? Nope. Redemption Island is back. So now people are getting sent there again. And uh, we waited for three people. And, you know, finally ours got sent home, beat by his brother and Tina Weston. And now Laura's been sent there again. And so uh, I'm just over Redemption Island. At least, however, it seems like because now we're all merged and there's no secrets between tribes, it's not a time for all the people who've been voted out to, like, vent their dirty laundry to the other team. Because that was awful and not a good part of Redemption Island. If you're out of the game, you're supposed to be out of the game. If you go to Redemption, you're not supposed to be able to communicate with these other people. I mean, you don't see the jury members coming up, you know, and high-fiving on their way in. So, Redemption Island is back, so the more things change, the more things stay the same, unfortunately. Changes. This here, I think Survivor has amazing challenges. I think the people, the, the team that builds it, they have a fancy name, I don't know what it is. Uh, they, uh, they, they come up with amazing challenges. I also think that that team went on vacation for like four weeks because the last couple of weeks the challenges have been lame. What was the challenge where he holds up the pictures and then it's a memory thing and he recites them back and they have pictures too? And they, what, what was that? They look like something in like a kindergarten class. Like, you know, a really, really dumb kindergarten class. And well, speaking of dumb, 
Why were most of them out after round one? It was six items and he was going so slowly. He was like, compass. Let's see the next one. It was a boat kind of thing. Ship. Oh, nobody's out. What the heck? Yeah, this. Huh. You can't just make up a repeat thing over and over in your mind. It was six items. Oh my goodness. These people must, must, must make a shopping list when they go to Costco. Goodness. And then, I mean, everything has just been so just kind of janky. Like, stand here and here's the coins were the fanciest thing part of the whole thing. With a weird ne immunity necklace. I don't know what that is. Um, that. Oh, it's like some tin cans and cut them. And then even this most latest immunity challenge with the ropes, the colored ropes, were the most interesting set decoration we've seen in three weeks. And they focus on them, and the picture is on the website because they look so pretty. I'm like, why are the ropes even colored? I can tell these rope it is by the fact that they're holding onto it. And like, don't try to act like color ropes is going to be fancy because there's still color ropes on a wooden post. Last season they built a huge structure. Earlier in this season they have boats and puzzles and flags and islands. And now we have to stand on one foot and touch your nose. Just, okay, we need to bring back the, uh, the dream team back, okay, and get these challenges back on point for the end of Blood versus Water. Because, yeah, it's, it's, uh-uh. No well, so much. Um, that's my recap of episodes 10, 9, 8, you know, the last few episodes. And uh, we do have a wear of the week for this episode post-merge. And that wear of the week is Sierra. Sierra was really rocking in many different ways her new purple buff. First she had it on like normal, then she wore it in the fancy wristband style. What's hilarious is that Sierra is so skinny that her wristband it looks like a, a screen bracelet that she borrowed from Lizzie Lohan. Then uh, in this latest episode, she had it on, on her head, but also had on a really nice swimsuit. Where did Sierra get this nice swimsuit? Is she shopping somewhere um, on the island? Because that was, that was very nice, I was very impressed. Um, so, Sierra, you're doing well in the game, and you're wearing the buff well, so you are our wearer of the week. This recap has been all about change, and uh, recently in the Philippines, recently in the Philippines, where our last three seasons of Survivor have been shot, I feel, as we all know, uh, devastated the, much of the land, and killed many people. So, I just think it's, you know, if you can, Reach out and, and, and help them. They've allowed us, as Survivor fans, to go and see their country uh, for the last three seasons. And, um, you know, I just think that the least we can do is kind of help out if you can. So I'm going to include uh, here in this video just some websites that you can go to if you haven't already. Uh, just support the Philippines. Support the Filipinos, uh, including, I don't know, maybe my distant relatives. You know, I am a Ramos, after all. And uh, just let them know that, you know, we're there to help them. This is there, there to let us come and do our crazy reality show on their soil. Uh, that's all I've got, Survivor Buffs. Uh, on behalf of the Buff Headwear Company, I am Toby Blackwell, encouraging you to go to the Buff website and also to check out my YouTube page and also my personal website and subscribe to my YouTube page. In the meantime, go donate to the Philippines. Uh, don't go changing, but do me. Good choices. That's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. That's just the way it is. Oh yeah. Something will never change.